Hey man. There you go. DRI's first record. Oh, speaking of skateboards, do you remember that? Oh, love Doggy Style. Yeah. That was one of my the first bands I saw was Doggy Style. Skate Party, man. You got to get that, Pete. Skate Party. I picture that on one of your films. Get into skating. If you count like little kids skating, they had a banana board from bought it at Grand Auto. Actually, it was called the Shark. This one was mine or ours, my brother and I's, when we were kids, like little kids. And this one stayed around, so it's fiberglass. I know, super rad. He's got the wheels from the Makaha board he had on it. And what do we got here? Some bear flex on the back. Nice. I like the grid tape job. That's Super how it came. Classic. I think it came from the department store like that, probably. Later in the 80s, we saw guys skating down the street when we were kids because we lived in the hills. And after seeing that, and they were sliding, sliding was all in. And then we were like, we got to do that. And so we actually bought the board off one of the guys that was sliding down the hill. And this one was actually my first like real skateboard. It was a uh, Doug Saladino Pine Design. Obviously now it's all the Damn, pieces. Look at the tail. I think I cut that, but I honestly used to <laughs> ride boards. Why did you cut it? Um, I think we were doing like skimboard down the stairs type shit, <laughs> you know, like. Shh. But yeah, you had the ghost gate because that's where you got all our stuff back then from the dad. Which one? Same Mateo. I probably bought it from Fedge. He was he worked there when I was a kid. He was like, he was one of the guys. So this was the sickest. Three favorite tricks. Frontside grind. Can't go wrong there. Frontside slapping, does that count as a frontside grind? Just because you can do that all over when you're just cruising around. If I could do a good tail tap lately, that yeah. stoked me out. Just that feeling of hanging for a second and then dropping. What about Hewitt though? A tail, tail block to fakey? Absolutely not. Sure, when I was a kid, I invented all sorts of tricks. Probably other people did too, <laughs> the same tricks, but I thought they were mine. Uh, like a one footed car? One footed car? Yeah, but I'm sure guys did that probably 10 years before I did that. I used, uh, at Wheat Berry's ramp, I did this one called the Rewind Grind. Yeah! And Jake says it's bullshit, but it was like a front side grind, take your back foot off, throw your board then kick backwards and then do a fakey grind and then come back in. You know, I, I was really horrible at naming tricks always, so I really needed help with that. I used to like to always like learn tricks where I kind of took something off or mixed the two tricks together. Like, I wanted to learn like a, do a boneless and a grind, so I, I did like a bean plant to grind, which that might have already been a trick too, but that kind of was something I, I did. Or I did one, which ended up being called the oxtail <laughs> grab, but I don't know. But the backside grind, 50-50, grab the tail, take your, ta take your back foot off on the platform, and then a dr just drop back into the ramp. That was one I think I made up, but I don't know what else. Yeah, see, that's what I try to do. Just run and jump and see if you can land back on your board or knee slide and then jump back on your board or take your feet off and do like a do like a hang ten and then drop in <laughs> like 
It was all this little trickery. I don't know why I keep all this stuff. The old rails, that's what we had, of course, back then. But yeah, this is how we used to ride our boards down to this, like, literally, this is, I'd ride my board, like, this was how close the tail was, how small the nose would get, and you just ride the fuck out of it. This was a Chris Cook, I had Chris Cook sign it in 99, look at that, he put the year. Fuck yeah, he went to Vagabond, it was sick. But yeah, man, I used to ride it fucking down. So like, this one's the BK. Got this. <laughs> I was doing a job at someone's house, and this guy was using it to move engines when he's working on cars. And I was like, whoa, I know that guy. I love that. And he was like, oh, that's your friend. Here, you can have it. And he gave me the board. That's why I was like, Bryce, you know, was this board that you rode maybe? And he's like, Veriflex truck. No, I didn't ride that board. So yeah, but that's a sick one. This one I got at some guy's house. He said that they in San Francisco, and he said they used to make their own boards. It was on his wall, and he's like, oh yeah, we used to make our own boards. Some guy in the sunset. And these are just some like old, old ones. Got some metal wheel ones, which I'm stoked because it has like a little peace sign on it and like someone's phone number. I should probably give it a call. 24 Ultra Flex. It's got Skateboard City, San Francisco on the back. With some Huffy trucks and some OJ wheels. This thing's fun. This one's a bulldog designs. When we went down to Venice like 10 or so years ago, we skated Gonzales pool with Ray Flores and uh, and uh, we went back to a shop and they stoked me on a board. So I've had this in a stack forever thinking I was gonna hang it up, but then I was like, you know what, when I got it, I wanted to ride it. So actually I just put it together and it's pretty fun. Doing some longboard and I remember I went skate with my friend. He goes, yeah, we built a skate park in Palo Alto and being like, what? No, there's no possible way. In the 80s, they didn't have skate parks like that. Represent Greer. Well, unfortunately, two of the best guys, I'm not just saying this, but they were, are dead, and that's Phil and Tim Brosh. Literally, I skated air with them, and they both just had the most flow and lines. And Fedge. Fedge ruled it. Fedge, like, would do those two airs over the big, like, the hip, and then the second hip airs, and he flew all over that place. And then just the locals that were there all the time. There's cool people, there's poops, there's the whole thing. It's funny to think that we'd go and wear full pads there in the summertime just to escape that. But that was the first of the 90s parts. Psycho Pete. 
I had a lot of weird nicknames, just one-off nicknames in there. No, you misspelled it. And then Schmitty gives me shit forever, calls me Fisco Pete. <laughs> That's it. It's to this day, you'll say it's red. I know. What does Fisco mean? Nothing, but it sounds red. <laughs> Tell me about the Spitfire ad. Yeah, I love that picture. That's um, Gabe Morford took that picture. Ruben came out to help get me stoked, and we took it. Um, that ditch when that thing opened was insane. It was like we went there and it was like, is this a skate park? <laughs> but for us, it was all about just how high you can go on that thing and go as fast as you could and all that stuff. So I went there and I told Gabe, yeah, we're gonna do this and that. And I was like, gonna grind this little nook. And I was gonna, he was like, nah, it doesn't look good. And he, he's the one who said, I do a bean plant right there. And I'd never done that before. And I had a bunch of tricks I thought were cool there, but he's like, try that. And I tried it and it was like, oh, it kind of worked. So it worked out good. I love that picture. I think that might be one of my most favorite pictures that someone took it. That was uh, Ruben, my main man Ruben, who put all that together. And he's the one who made the ox, <laughs> who, thought, who, who nicknamed me the ox.